Hi there, Mrs. McCann here. I'm with Catherine and we're going to learn about corn. Hi, my name is Catherine Michael. I'm 24 years old and I'm a graduate student at the UW-Madison. So my experiment um, focuses on corn and this is a hybrid field that we're standing in. Um, I'm interested in studying the yield of different lines and we measure yield um, with a combine and then in a couple different ways by harvesting the ears. So on an ear of corn, um, you have the number of kernel rows that go around the ear in this way, and you also have the number of kernels that go this way. And so this can help us measure the yield of a field of corn because every field is divided into plants within a field, number of ears actually on the plant, and then these um, components like up and around. That seems like a lot of counting to do. Actually, it's not because we, when we harvest the ears, we put them on a flatbed scanner like you mm. would do for photos, and then a computer can measure the size and shape of all of our ears of corn. A computer does seem more efficient. It is a lot <laughs> more efficient. So the next interesting thing about corn is that when corn is flowering, when the tassel is shedding pollen and the silks are out of the ear, every single silk accepts one grain of pollen and each silk connects to a kernel on the ear. And so the pollen will land on the end of the silk and germinate and grow a tiny tube inside every single silk. And so then the, when the pollen reaches the end and reaches the base of the kernel, it puts the sperm nuclei inside the kernel to fertilize it. And that's how you get all the kernels of corn on an ear. Wow, that seems like a lot of pollen. Yeah. <laughs> Each tassel, so here's a tassel, um, can generate millions and millions of grains of pollen, but mm. you only need about six to eight hundred to fertilize an ear of corn. Wow. That would be a lot of math to do. <laughs> so, Catherine, what is special about this corn that you are working with? So, I'm studying how different families of corn um, cross together to make the best hybrids. Mm -hmm. That would grow the most corn to feed the most Yep, so people. we're interested in feeding people and animals to make... Um, so we, we corn feeds cows, pigs, chickens, um, and then we can also use it to make ethanol for biofuel. Oh, very interesting stuff. Let's keep going. Hello again. I want you to take a look at this field of corn and tell me what you notice about some of the stalks of corn in this field. What do you notice? I notice there's some paper bags on some of the stalks. Let's learn about that. Hi everyone, so today we're going to make some hybrid seed corn and to do that we take two inbred lines. So we have inbred uh, number one here and inbred number two here. So we're going to take the pollen on the tassel from this paper bag and we're going to pollinate the silks that are covered by this little white bag. So. Once the pollen from this plant has fallen on the silks of this plant, we'll get hybrid kernels at the end of the year when we harvest. So to protect the ear and make sure that it's not contaminated by any other pollen that we don't want to cross with, we cover it with this bag. Now, what is the goal of making this hybrid corn? So this is the corn that farmers would grow in their fields. And so we're testing these varieties for yield and quality and all kinds of different traits. All right, so making more corn and better corn. More corn and better corn. Great, thank you. Hello, hello. We're in a different field of corn this time. It's an experiment that's been going on for a lot of years. Let's learn more about it. Hi, everybody. So this corn um, has been growing here at the University of Wisconsin for over 40 years. Um, it is an open pollinated variety that farmers used to grow in the 1930s and um, my professor's grand predecessor started this experiment um, back in the 1970s. And so we're growing this corn and selecting year after year for prolificacy or number of ears per plant. Mm. So if we start at the top of this plant, we see that it has one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten shoots on it. So this plant could potentially put ten ears of corn out, which is incredible. That seems like a lot. How many does a normal corn plant have? A normal corn plant has one or two to th maybe three ears on it. Wow, ten. That's impressive. So this has taken 40 cycles of selection to generate this number of ears, mm. and it's still ongoing. So very interesting that scientists kind of share their projects over the years mm -hmm. and that if, if they are done and they are moving on, that they can give it to another researcher to keep the research going. Yep, so Professor Lonquist again started this experiment in the 1970s and he passed it on to Professor Coors, who then pr passed it on to my professor, uh, Professor Natalia De Leon. Amazing, oh, thank you. Okay, so this field behind me we're using as an observation field uh, where we're measuring traits like when the silks come out of the shoots and when the pollen starts shedding. And then later, after the plants are done flowering, we'll take plant height and ear height and stalk diameter and number of ears per plant in addition to several other traits. And we've also taken the DNA from all of these lines and so we know um, their genotypes at a lot of different places so we can connect the genetic data to the phenotypic data to learn more about the genetic control of a lot of uh, different traits. So collecting that data, mm -hmm. very important. Lots of data. Now what about this field over here? So this field, um, we're studying the effect of planting density or how many plants there are in a specific area on yield. And so if we start at the beginning of the plot, we have one plant that has a lot of space all the way around it and then as we go farther into the plot the plants get a lot closer together and they're planted um, like two inches apart at the very end. Do you have a hypothesis about what's going to be the the best way? So our hypothesis is that plants with a lot of space will put on more ears and also will put on these extra like uh, tillers which are um, stalks that originate from the same mother plant as the main central stem and we also hypothesize that these ears will be bigger than the plant than the ears on the plants at a higher planting density. Sweet, let's get a close-up on how close they are together. Here we go, let's go into the feed. So here I can see they've got a little space. Now they're even closer together. And you can also see that the stems are getting much thinner as they're planted closer mm. together because they have to grow taller to get to the sunlight because mm. there's too many neighbors. Interesting. Yep, and see, look at how close together they are here. And then we'll reach the end of the plot here, and this is the beginning of the next one. And again, it has a lot more space around it, and the stem is much thicker because it has more nutrients available to it. Mm. So each plot is kind of measuring this to see the best ways to grow corn. Excellent.